There were thousands of applications that ran on CPM. We're going to take a look at just a few here that illustrate some of the major developments in software that took place in this era that really launched the microcomputing revolution. All right, here we are with a CPM prompt. We're running on an Altair 8800, and CPM is in charge of this machine. It's taking care of our disk I.O., terminal I.O., printers, all that good stuff. This is a change from the way Altairs ran since their introduction, where generally BASIC was in control of the machine. BASIC is what you loaded, BASIC ran the disks, BASIC ran the terminals, but now CPM is in charge. What happened to BASIC? BASIC now is just another program. It's no different than loading a game or a uh, word processor or spreadsheet. It's just another program. Here we have mBASIC. This is Microsoft BASIC. This is literally the same program as uh, this extended BASIC. Very few differences in terms of its capabilities and most of its functions. Now the primary difference is that now CPM is in charge of disk I.O. So we don't have to do a mount as before to mount a disk system because CPM is in charge of that. The files command still works, tells us what files are out there, but BASIC has let CPM take care of that. Programs are loaded the same way. Load, and in quotes, give it a file name. We'll load the Lunar Lander program. And again, it goes out, loads that into BASIC's memory, and you can run the program. But now, CPM was in charge of doing the terminal I.O. and doing the disk I.O. So BASIC is still available, still the same useful tool, but now it's just yet another program that is being run under CPM. Right, when you're done with BASIC, you type system, it returns to the operating system. And now we're right back where we are, were running CPM or any other program we desire. All right, so BASIC is no longer the focal point, but it's still available. What became the focal point? Well, as the time went on, more and more people were using terminals, CRTs, instead of just teletypes. And those terminals were becoming smart. What does smart mean? Smart means that they were addressable. That means that you could clear screens, put cursors where you want them, make characters only appear in certain places. This launched the ability to have full screen editors for things like WordStar or WordMaster, really made the word processing world begin. Also, it allowed things like spreadsheets, which of course were a critical part in the start of the computing revolution as well. And of course, it made for some interesting games. Let's take a look at a couple of these. On this disk, we have a uh, word processor called WordMaster, very similar to WordStar, which most all of you have heard of. So WordMaster is a full screen editor. I don't have a document on here. I'll just look at a source file. What do we have out here that's a source file? Let's take a look at searbuff.asm. So I'm going to WordMaster, and I give the file I want to edit. And you'll notice that this will clear the screen and put the file up. And now you can scroll down through the file. You can see our cursor here. I can move forward a word at a time. I can move backwards a word at a time. I can move down a line. I can come in here and change this comment. Um, this is Let's keep it pretty. This is a new comment. So now we have the ability, because of smart terminals and cursor addressing, to make word processing and things we're used to today happen for the first time in the microcomputer world. Much more easy to use than like Ed and some of those line-based editors. All right, so we'll exit that. I'll we'll just abort. Uh, cursors addressing wasn't all business and all productivity. Got to have some fun with it too, right? So one of the uh, first games taking advantage of this that was popular in the day was a game called Ladder. It's a lot like Super Mario, but this was done completely with just a serial terminal and graphic. And I mean, excuse me, no graphics. Totally done with characters. Pluses, minuses, Qs, Hs, equal signs, etc. All right, you're going to see we have ladders. We have ramps that we run across with holes. Here's our person. If you look at them, when he's going forward, he's a P. When he's going backwards, he's done with a Q. So you kind of see which direction he's facing. You can jump by hitting that. And here's the bad guys. They're falling through things. If I run into one of them, you see how I spin around and die? 
all done with P's and Q's and letters. Pretty impressive stuff in my opinion. Uh, the game is a bit addictive, but again, it's like Super Mario before it ever existed, but no graphics even. So I'm going to go over here and go up the ladder. Oops, I missed it. I'm not very good at this. All right, and then you have to jump the gap. And then a bad guy is going to fall through. Oh, it's a more bad guy. I better turn around. And then you can go up the next ladder and over to the next lever. Okay, so... Oops, stuck in the middle. So it's not all fun. I mean, it's not all business. There's fun in games. Uh, there's fun as well. Uh, and again, this is the same horsepower of computing, but the introduction of smart terminals, uh, like this one is VT100 compatible, um, was making things a lot more interesting. All right, I can't do two things at once. Um, in addition to word processing in games, one of the uh, main things that really helped things microcomputers take off in the business world was the spreadsheet. So over here on disk B, I believe, I've got an early spreadsheet called SuperCalc. So SuperCalc took advantage of the addressability of cursors along with uh, word processing to give us the first spreadsheets. And the spreadsheet ended up being just an absolutely wonderful tool in the hands of people that needed to crunch numbers. All right, so let's take a look at an early spreadsheet here called SuperCalc. All right, uh, commands are initiated with a slash and L for load and a file name. There's a program out there called Sample. Hit return and it's loading the program now. It's okay, it's asking if I want all, part, or consolidate. This is when you're worried about fitting it all in memory. I'll say all. All right, so it's going to finish loading it now. Now it's not quite as pretty as it is on a on a modern computer, but you can see here's our rows and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, there's our columns. All right, and so this is a spreadsheet where we've got sales, gross profit, expenses, net income, that kind of thing. And you can move around it uh, with control characters or with arrows. Um, arrows were just starting to show up on a lot of the keyboards. So for example, if I change this expense from 160 to 200, that went up, you see it's calculating, and you see the numbers rippling through the spreadsheet. So, very first spreadsheets, really instrumental in the business world's acceptance of microcomputers, that and word processing. All right, let's quit. Yes. All right, another category of software that was interesting is another game. Now, this has nothing to do with screen control. It has to do with um, the ability for the computer to process and recognize human interaction in a human form. Basically, so it looks like you're interacting with a human. That game was Zork. This is one of the first uh, role-playing games, text role-playing games. I'll just start it up here. Um, kind of remade popular again by uh, Big Bang Theory, because those guys like playing these old games. But this was interesting advancement in that you were talking to the computer like a person, and it did an amazingly good job. All right, you are standing in an open field west of a white house. There's a small mailbox here. Well, open mailbox. It reveals a leaflet. Well, what do we want to do? Well, let's read it. Read leaflet. So I've taken it, and on the leaflet it says, Welcome to Zork. It looks like we were supposed to have read that leaflet. I mean, you can, you can close the mailbox. Um, and you can travel. Let's go east. And how about go west? There's a forest. To the east there appears to be some... Going down a forward path. Low branches on a tree. Now, let's... Can you climb the tree? Right, so here you have this interaction with a machine and it feels like you're talking to a person. This was a huge step forward in computing even though it was just a game. But this illustrates some of the categories of things that were happening in the days when we were still text-based. We didn't have our nice uh, user interfaces like we do with mice and graphics and all that yet. But this was a huge step forward in computing. All started from the Altair doing basic and then getting into things like CPM where now it's a much more flexible machine.
All right, that does it for this video. Uh, the computer used in the demonstration today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and the feel, the features, performance, and the limitations of a real Altair 8800, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. This makes the machine very reliable and you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage or collector's quality computer while you run through all these old software demonstrations and get to play with this stuff hands-on. It's just a great way to learn about this period in history. Be sure to visit the folks at AltairClone.com to learn more about that.